Hello, happy to have you here. I'm Willy Benz from the University of Bern in Switzerland. In this talk, I will introduce KEOPS, the first small mission in ESA science program. KEOPS stands for Characterizing Exoplanet Satellite, and therefore it is a mission dedicated to the study of exoplanets. By now, the satellite has been operating successfully for more than a year. During the next 20 minutes or so, I will present to you the major aspects of the mission, its science goals, an example of outstanding results obtained thus far. As you know, the field of exoplanet science is about making precision measurements. Two indirect techniques have so far proven particularly successful. The first is based on radial velocity measurement. When a planet orbits a star, it induces small periodic variation in the radial velocity of the star, which can be detected and which provide a measure of the minimum mass of the planet. Precision goal here is 10 centimeter per second. And the other method is based on precise photometric measurements. A planet transiting in front of a star induces periodic variation in the light we receive from the star. The amplitude of this variation provide a measure of the relative size between the star and the planet. Here, the typical precision goal is 20 ppm. Together, the measurements of mass and radius allow for the determination of the mean density of a planet. This represents the first characterization of the bulk chemical composition of the planet. And one can clearly identify these groups of small planets, giant gaseous planet, and the intermediate one. However, to be really useful and go beyond this general classification, measurements of very high precision uh, are actually needed. KEOPS is one among several space missions either dedicated to the study of exoplanet the one in the upper half of the diagram, or with strong capabilities to study with them, the one in the bottom part. Amongst the dedicated missions, Ariel is the only spectroscopic mission. All the others, including KELPS, are photometric missions using the transit method to detect and study exoplanet. However, CHAOPS differs very much from these other photometric missions. The key characteristic being that it has been designed from the beginning to further study exoplanets already known. This makes it quite unique. Hence, the primary goal of CHAOPS is not to discover additional planets, even though, as we shall see later, it does, but to follow up the most interesting planets already known, to obtain more precise measurements whenever possible. KEOPS is therefore a follow-up mission and not a discovery mission. This implies that measurement precision has been a major driver in all of the missions developed. KEOPS is also the first small mission in ESA's portfolio of science mission. This meant that its development time, as well as its costs, were capped. This implied some very difficult trade-offs at times. Finally, KEOPS is also the first mission for which ESA shared the leadership with Switzerland. I don't really need to explain what the planetary transit is to this audience. You all know that when a planet transits in front of its host star, the light we receive from this star decreases slightly as it is blocked by the planet. Similarly, as the planet orbits the star, it reflects a variable amount of stellar light, which introduces an orbital variation of the total light measured. During the transit proper, the decrease of light is proportional to the ratio of the sizes between star and planet. Hence, we can measure the size of the planet if we know the size of the star. For a sun-like star, a transiting Jupiter-like planet results in a 1% decrease in light, while a transiting Earth-like planet produces a 0.01% reduction in light. 
These numbers actually define the precision at which the signal has to be measured to achieve a given precision on the measure of the planetary radius. As far as Keops is concerned, two main science requirements were set early on that drove much of the design of Keops, one for bright stars and one for faint stars. Basically, a precision of 20 ppm should be achieved in six hours integration time for stars brighter than magnitude nine, and 85 ppm should be achieved for stars in the magnitude range nine to 12. On the right, we have actually measured performances taken during this past year that demonstrate that these science requirements are clearly met by Keops. So the photometric performance of Keops are well within specs. The Keops science observing time is divided into elements. The guaranteed time observations represent 80% of the observing time and is managed by the Keops consortium. The remaining 20% are competitively open to the community and are managed by ESA. Some examples of the science currently carried out are accurate sizing of planets to improve our knowledge of the mass radius relation, the characterization of some atmospheric properties through the measurements of phase curves, the search for exomoons or rings, the discovery of new planet in multi-planet system and the determination of their masses using the transit time variation method, the follow-up of some of the most interesting test discovery in a joint collaboration with tests called CHESS, and of course, building up a list of the most interesting objects for further spectroscopic follow-up by future large facilities such as JWST, the ELTs on the ground, or Ariel. This diagram shows the development timeline of KEOPS from the original call for proposal in 2012 until the launch at the end of 2019. The three horizontal bars represent the instrument, the satellite, and the ground segment respectively. Major milestones are represented by inverted light blue triangles at the very top. Following its selection in October 2012, detailed studies were performed that led to the adoption of the mission in February 2014, with shortly thereafter the selection of the prime contractor Airbus Defense and Space in Madrid. Finally, the launch vehicle was selected in April uh, 2017, which meant that the instrument had to be designed in such a way that it could be accommodated by most launchers and survive the corresponding launch. In April 2018, the instrument left Bern, Switzerland, fully tested and calibrated, and was shipped to the prime contractor in Madrid to be integrated on the platform. Followed a number of tests, before Keops was put into storage for a few months, waiting for the prime passenger to be ready to proceed with the launch. In between these milestones, a lot of work was done with the usual large number of reviews to verify good progress. In the end, Keops was built within schedule and within budget. On December 18, after an aborted launch the day before, Keops was successfully launched at 5.54 local time. We see on the right, the control room with people eagerly checking the big screen to see if everything is nominal. Finally, the launch itself on the left with the rocket just if lifting off the launch pad. Three hours later, radio contact was made and three intensive test days followed ending just before Christmas, with Keops in safe mode, waiting for the beginning of commissioning activities in early January. The first three months of 2020 were dedicated to these commissioning activities. Science operation followed and are going on since, without disruption, the satellite working nominally. The team working on Keops was composed of scientists and engineers from Institute located in 11 European countries, the so-called Keops Consortium, and ESA itself. 
responsibilities and deliverables were clearly identified for the payload as well as for the platform and the ground segment. Basically, ESA was responsible for the procurement of the platform, the CCD, and the launch services, while the consortium was in charge of the payload development as well as the ground segment. The, the data is worth your note that this is very unusual in the ESA model to have a consortium in charge of the ground segment, which comprises both the Mission Operations Center, the MOC, located at INTA near Madrid in Spain, and the Science Operations Center, the SOC, located at the University of Geneva in, in Switzerland. In this slide, we show the spacecraft configuration on the left, while the details of the platform are shown on the right. The spacecraft fully assembled weighs about 280 kilograms and measures about one and a half meter on each side. Clearly visible on the left is a large telescope fixed on top of the hexagonal platform. Body-mounted solar panels provide the required power and shade the telescope. In addition, a set of heaters and radiators maintain the temperature of the telescope and the CCD at co as constant as possible to ensure best possible photometric precision. Measurement during the mission showed that the temperature of the CCD is indeed constant to within a couple of millikelvins. Also visible are the Star Tracker optical heads, which are used to orient the spacecraft. On the right hand side, we see un the unfolded hexagonal structure of the platform, which allows an easy integration of all the different flight control elements. Notice also in the center the, spher the spherical reservoir of fuel used for collision avoidance maneuvers and the orbiting of Kerbs at the end of its life. The Keops telescope has a 32 centimeter diameter primary mirror, a total length of one and a half meter and weighs about 60 kilogram. The challenge was to optimize it to reject a maximum of stray light. For this, it uses two external baffle, one internal baffle and a set of internal veins to prevent stray light to enter the focal plane module and reach the CCD in the back. Light entering the telescope is reflected first by the primary mirror and then the secondary mirror before entering the back end optics and being reflected toward the CCD. The CCD is a back illuminated 1K by 1K from E to V. As far as its sensitivity is concerned, we see that it is very close to the one flown on Kepler, but noticeably bluer than the test CCD. In the laboratory, we could measure a large number of the characteristics of the instrument. You have a list here. Uh, we could also uh, test the photometric performance of the full system in the laboratory. And as we can see here, the requirements of 20 ppm were easily met in the laboratory. KERPS was put on a sun-synchronous polar dusk orbit at 700 kilometer altitude. This special orbit was a compromise between minimizing radiation exposure, limiting Earth's obscuration on the sky, and limiting, re limiting reflected light from the Earth to enter the telescope. As a result, KERPS can see a large fraction of the sky as is illustrated on the figure on the right which is colored according to the number of day observing time available per year. The measurements are downlinked to the mock twice a day when Keops is within reach of the Madrid antenna. This provides a total downlink capability of 1.2 gigabits per day. The Keops full-size image is 1024 by 1024 pixels. The optical system is such that one pixel corresponds to roughly one arc second of the sky. Due to the limitation in bandwidth, it is impossible to downlink all full images taken and some onboard processing is required. A small circular image of 200 pixel diameter centered on the target star is being cropped together with the corresponding margins of the CCD. As long as the exposure time is longer than about 30 seconds, no more processing is performed and the data are sent to the ground. We 
the exposure time is smaller than about 30 seconds, the accumulated data starts exceeding the downlink cap capacity, capacity and images must be stacked, which is done pixel by pixel. To avoid losing temporal information, image jets with a diameter of 50 pixels are being cropped out of each image before stacking and individually sent to the ground together with the stacked images. Being a follow-up mission, KOPS needs to know where to look and when to look. And therefore, it relies on a number of facilities on the ground and in space to provide the targets to look at. We have ground-based RV surveys. We have a list here. We have uh, ground-based transit surveys, essentially NGTS. And we have, of course, TESS and K2 to a lesser extent. It is worth pointing out that KEOPS is a high precision space photometer and as such is not limited to observe exoplanets, but can in principle obtain high precision photometric measurements of any source in the sky within its magnitude range. As a first example of what KEOPS can add in terms of science by following up known target, I will present the case of the follow up of TOI 178 the planetary system originally discovered by TESS. TESS found three planets, with two of them appearing to be on very close orbits. This opened the possibility for a potential first detection of co-orbiting planets. Hence, Cheops observed this magnitude 12 star a number of times, including during a continuous period of 11 consecutive days, and discovered the TOI-178 is actually a planetary system with at least six planets. Combining the Keops measurements with those obtained by TESS, NGTS, Espresso, and Speculos allowed us to obtain a new and exciting picture of a most interesting multi-planet system. The study did not confirm the presence of co-orbital planets, but rather a complex planetary system so far with six planets the outer five being in Laplace resonances. The transit curves of the six planets are dis displayed on the right-hand side of the slide together with their period, radius, and masses as determined in our study. The resonances between the planet are also indicated in blue. Worth pointing out, JWST time has recently been obtained to study several planets of this highly interesting system. While the full detail of the study can be found in Lolo et al. 2020, I would like to point out how interesting this system is from a planetary formation perspective. In this diagram, we have plotted the mean density of planets belonging to well-known multi-planet system as a function of their equilibrium temperature. You recognize here TRAPPIST-1 to the left. One would expect a relative monotonic increase of the mean density as a function of temperature, as volatile element cannot be retained or were never accreted to begin with. While this is roughly the case for all the system known so far, it is not the case for TOI-178, which shows a major discontinuity in mean density. This is quite puzzling, as such system is dynamical, quite, dynamically quite fragile which leaves little room for reshuffling of planets. Hence, the system is bound to set new constraints on planet formation model. My second example deals with a follow-up of another system, new to Lupi, which is a bright star of magnitude 5.78. RV surveys have discovered three planets orbiting these stars with periods of 11.6, 27.6, and 107.6 days. TESS has discovered that the inner two planets were actually transiting. Because planets orbiting bright stars are particularly interesting, Cheops targeted New Tulupi during six different runs between April and July 2020. During one of these runs, a transit of the third planet with a period of over 100 days was detected by chance. And we were quite lucky. And you can see it here, the long period planet showing up in the data here. 
Interestingly, the three planets seem to have quite different bulk composition. The inner one is compatible with a purely rocket, rocky planet. The middle one is compatible with a mixture of rock and water and a small amount of hydrogen, while the outer one is best fitted by an almost pure water or icy planet. The importance in, in measurements precision is illustrated in this table. Let us focus on the determination of the radius of the planets, the one in the red boxes on the slide. The four columns provide a determination of the radii using the RV data and various comp combinations of photometric data. The difference in radius for planet B and C between the original determination and the one obtained, including the CHAOPS data, ranges between 14% for planet B to 31% for planet C. Precision radii are particularly important for these planets in this system because they span the so-called radius valley. The system is therefore likely to constrain primordial atmospheric photoevaporation model in the future. In conclusion, the take home message would be the following. KERPS is a follow up space mission to obtain precise photometric measurements over a large portion of the sky. One year of operation has shown how useful precise photometry can be in improving our knowledge of targets discovered by others. And I showed you two examples of this. Although planned as a follow up machine, the observation of multiple planet system have led to the discovery of several additional planets and thereby to a better characterization of these systems. And you've seen this in the case of TOI 178. Kerb's observation have also been instrumental in successful proposals for observation on larger space infrastructure, in particular JWST and HST. Finally, ESA is providing 20% competitive open access to Kerb's everyone is encouraged to use the satellite. And if you want to know more about ESA's guest observer program, you have here a few elements of the, the most important one being the website at the end of the slide here that will give you everything you need to know to successfully apply for observing time. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention.